Hi, everyone. Today we're here to talk about a paper on mass data encoders for microscopy or scalable learners of cell biology. Uh, this is a big collaborative effort across recursion, and three of us are here presenting today. Uh, so our domain is high content screening, in which chemical or genetic perturbations are applied to cells, and then they're imaged with high throughput microscopes, uh, typically using this assay called cell painting, which stains uh, six of the cellular compartments. Um, we found that when we scale this technology up to genome-wide CRISPR screens, we can start to recapitulate known biology, where genes with similar um, functions are actually paired close together in the embedding space. Uh, and the focus of our work is how to learn the best re representation of the images that we can get um, good, meaningful biology from the embeddings. Um, previous works have focused on data sets that are on the order of 100,000 images. Uh, but we were interested to see how well we can improve performance on our benchmarks when we scaled up our data set to close to 100 million images. Um, and our, our largest data set actually includes close to 4 million unique perturbations. Um, to get better performance, we found that we had to move away from some of the state of the art approaches uh, that uh, use weekly supervised learning. And in this case, models are trained to take uh, images and then predict what the perturbation was uh, from the experiments. Uh, and then at inference time, an intermediate layer in the model is used to represent images uh, for downstream use cases. Um, the direction we took was uh, using self-supervised learning and moving away from supervised, uh, weekly supervised learning. Um, and what we're doing here is taking an, an image, masking out close to 75% of it or more, um, and then trying to reconstruct it with masked autoencoders, uh, typically using the VIT architecture. Uh, at inference time, we use the output of the encoder to represent uh, the, the information in the images. Yeah, and so it turns out that training such uh, quite large uh, deep image foundation models on hundreds of millions of microscopy images is no simple task. And one phenomenon we observed while training uh, sort of vanilla mass autoencoders uh, is that uh, on the biggest data sets, uh, after training for some time, you'd see a plateau region emerge where loss wouldn't change, uh, and then it, the loss would actually diverge. And the reconstructions at that point of divergence were quite poor quality, um, and the representations were not useful. And so uh, we also noticed that in the smaller data sets, we would have preferred more sharp prediction of textures. And to, so to that end, we proposed and designed a new loss function based on predicting the Fourier transformation of the re uh, original image as part of the reconstruction. Um, by introducing that, uh, not only did the prediction of textures improve, but also uh, we found that this loss function helped to guarantee a stable descent during learning, which was critical to actually train the largest models on the largest data sets. And so next, we see uh, how we how we use these encoders end to end. So after we take all of our images of cellular uh, cells and do the knockouts of those perturbations, we get a representation of those perturbations by going through multiple stages of filtering and aligning uh, the embeddings. Uh, and ultimately, uh, this leads to genetic representations or chemical representations um, that we can benchmark and evaluate how useful are these embeddings at predicting uh, known biological relationships. And so uh, it turns out uh, that the more data you have and the more uh, model parameters you have, the better performance you observe with training the masked autoencoders as self-supervised learning on this data in terms of downstream ability to predict known relationships in biology across various a wide variety of uh, databases um, from protein complexes to gene pathways. And we did not observe the same phenomenon with weekly supervised learning. In fact, um, some of our results showed that weekly supervised learning could even have worse performance uh, by increasing the data set size, in particular, the number of perturbations. Um, and this is another depiction of uh, scaling the MAE uh, on more data and uh, with more model parameters, we see better downstream performance on certain data. And these reconstructions also demonstrate the model is certainly learning something useful about the cellular morphology. Awesome. So uh, one of the other main contributions of our work was introducing a channel agnostic mass autoencoder, which has the benefit, um, especially in microscopy images where different experimental pro protocols have different channel configurations and different channel numbers. Um, so this is useful 
um, to generalize to those uh, various data sets. So on the left, we see how this uh, the training of this channel agnostic model works. We treat each channel as a separate modality. We mask each channel separately and then use a shared tokenizer and positional embedder um, to pass uh, those embeddings to a, a transformer um, encoder. And then we use separate decoders for each channel to decode um, that mouse uh, uh, image uh, for specific to that channel. And then during inference, uh, whatever the number of channels or order of channels uh, does not um, affect the results. So we can just uh, use whatever data is available uh, through the tokenizer at the positional embeddings and use the train tra uh, in transformer encoder to encode those images and get the final output embedding. Um, here we see some of the results comparing a channel agnostic VIT with its um, MAE, uh, regular MAE counterpart. So the bottom channel agnostic uh, red box shows a VIT base with patch 16 and um, train on the same data set um, compared to the top box of the MAE VIT base without being uh, the channel, uh, having the channel agnostic feature. And we see that it does outperform in uh, recalling the known relationships. Um, one challenge that we did face was scaling this channel agnostic model to a uh, smaller pack size, which results in larger token uh, sizes. And we have left that for future improvements. Um, one thing to note is that we have deployed a VIT small channel agnostic model trained on our microscopy images and um, we released that on NVIDIA's BioNemo platform and that's available for, for public use. To wrap up, uh, the takeaways of our work is that we have shown uh, that um, we can scale um, uh, VIT-based models, uh, self-supervised learning methods to learn microscopy-based representations, and that as we scale these uh, architectures, we um, see an increase in the recall of known biological relationships, whereas uh, with weakly supervised learning methods, the recall degrades as we try to scale them. Uh, uh, an, a notable contribution was the Fourier domain reconstruction loss that helps with stabilizing the training and also getting better um, embeddings downstream. And um, another uh, takeaway is the channel agnostic MAVIT that helps generalize to various microscopy data sets and different channel configurations. In the future, we hope to expand on this channel agnostic MAEs and scale them to uh, larger token sizes and also integrate orthogonal biological data sets and uh, train multimodal foundation models. Thank you.